I've been busy putting plants in things um, and also <laughs> flowery bits and doing this that I bought ooh, seven or eight years ago decided to plant it up so I've got red plant and then some seeds in there which actually I think are radishes anyway that's not what you're interested in is it you want to see the beers they want to see the beers a couple of days ago I got a flavorly delivery and in that was seven beers 20 um, 20 different uh, or 20 cans uh, but only seven beers that was flavorly and I did a taste test for all of them today I went to Lidl and what I thought I'd try and do because I think flavorly have got kind of like their own sort of like tame breweries and so what I thought I'd do was kind of like match that without going into too many um, different breweries I go for, go for oh, this is like Lidl's own brewery I think um, Hatherwood you pick names like Hagen Dars purely at random now first before I quickly go through these I'll do the I'll do the maths the flavorly and that, it was all right you know I, I didn't I wasn't particularly disappointed 30 quid 29.95 for 20 cans now they do say that includes the two glasses which are worth £9.90 a magazine which is worth £5 the artisan snack which is worth £2.50 and £5.99 uh, sorry £5.95 delivery so that makes the total value of those 20 cans of beer £6.60 or 33p a can if we actually disregard all that stuff about freebies we're looking at £1.49 that's what you've paid and what you get in beer are 20 cans £1.49 makes your £29.95 but it's only seven beers three lots of four for some so today I bought 10 different beers and these cost me £11.36 or £1.14 a beer which is pretty pretty darn cheap so first I'm just going to go through very quickly what we've got we've got a ruby red nice red owl all of these are about five percent so that's their ruby red we've got a session IPA hop hunter session IPA looks all right hoppy zesty citrusy 4.4 percent and this is what's nice on the back they tell you what malts have gone in there and what hops they tell you the bitterness in IBU international bitterness units and give you an idea for food pairing one of the things I wasn't overly happy with the flavorly was the range it was all kind of like tend to be IPAs I like a bit of a you know a bit of a variety so this is the purple panther porter weighs in again at five percent nice to have a porter this again all from the Hatherwoods craft beer company this is um, a red rye pale ale and it's got an orange aroma mm, with caramel and toffee almost like a chocolate orange and this is only 4.2 percent but that's all right and again it tells you what malts and what hops and the bitterness IBUs 43 Summit Cascade one that I've never heard of before Citra and Amarillo so Huel Melon new one to me and finally of these bottles is the Green Gecko IPA 
and again 5% fair cop so that's those five bottles then there's a can which I'm gonna guess is another take on the clockwork orange type thing plunged orange pale IPA with uh, a punchy yeah, and refreshing with tangy orange sharpness nicely on the back if I can get this in focus probably not they tell you the malts and the hops and please focus this has got possibly one of my favorite hops at the moment Rakao so that's good the next can is the Twisted Knot American IPA. Now, I don't know what people mean these days by American IPA, but they've got a grapefruit aroma with notes of zesty citrusy fruits. On the back, they again give you the malts, which is a slightly more developed um, malt bill in here. And the hops, again, fairly basic stuff American stuff what you would expect from an American IPA so that's those to add to that I got a can of by the horns West End pills a Pilsner only 4% but uh, it's a by the horns and there was a by the horns one in the flavorly so I thought worth a go I also got this larger can and I have to admit it says it's a session IPA. When I saw it, I, you know, as you do, I just read steam beer, not steam brew. It's German, it's a German IPA. It looks to be all right. It's certainly, you get good value for money out of that. I like the Germans, they know how to drink. And then, number 10, I couldn't resist this. This is a, a little Welsh treasure. Brains dark, deliciously different. Only 4.1%, but um, it's Brains is a wonderful, uh, traditional, uh, like a, a really good old school brewery. Brains Bitter is, is like what, what you know, Wards was in Sheffield. It, it, Brains Bitter was that yeah, in Cardiff, that was what you would drink. So I got this because I'm quite into Welsh breweries. The big ones at the moment are Polly's and Tiny Rebel. But I just thought, I quite like the idea of going, oh, it says there, established 1882. So yeah, old school, like I said. Uh, a good old fashioned, proper dark beer. So we're gonna see where we go with these. 10 beers. I'm using me posh tasting glass and I shall glass, gladly <laughs> and gradually work through them. And my beer mat tonight is St. Mars of the Desert, a local neighbourly brewery. I'm not going to do all these tonight because I'll be absolutely slaughtered. But I'm going to start with the Pilsner. And I know I shouldn't really because that's a that's an IPA glass. But you know what a rebel I am. So let's get this poured. I'm gonna to have to come back in a minute. <laughs> One of my, oh, look at that color. Wow, and clarity. Yeah, big wow. And head. Not doing it. Oh, not saying it. Nope, 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 nope. Now that's back when that's died down. Just while that's settling, I took the um, peel off label off and uh, hmm. so the can underneath is kind of a little bit of a work of art in its own right. Now most people just use blank alley cans and then stick their label on there, but I thought that was quite nice. 
But let's have a look at the pearls. That hasn't really held its head. But look at that colour and look at that clarity. Crumbs. Now that. The wind's getting up. As long as it don't blow my beer mat away because I've only got the one. Right, let's have a taste quickly. It's lovely. That is astonishingly good. I don't, um, uh, I wasn't expecting that. To be completely honest. That's, um, that's, that's taken me by shock, by surprise and Pleasant, beautiful hoppy hit, but not overpowering. Lovely, just beautifully balanced. Fuck off. Nicely malty, just everything about that. God. It's got it, it's got that nice. You, you, I don't know quite what you'd say. I, I'm not. BJCP or Cicerone or anything like that, I don't know anything about those, but you know sometimes when you smell a beer and you think, yeah, that smells like a bloody good beer. Well, that's what this, <laughs> that's what this is like. That is just... Oh, God. Right, I'm, I'm really going to recommend that, seriously recommend that. Remember, these are all from Lidl, which a lot of people, you know, they'll turn their nose up at Lidl, fair enough, that's okay, I don't mind. <laughs> that means that there's more of stuff like this left for people who like quality beers, because that is a quality beer. Right, back when we're ready to do the next. Second up, the Twisted Knot, American IPA. Got to say, colour and clarity, very good. It's even retained a little bit of head doing it just not gonna do it nope sorry not gonna do it now this says it's um an American IPA so it's an APA basically it's got all of the standard hops that you'd expect from an APA let's see how it tastes That's not bad. <clears throat> if anything, possibly slightly harsh on hops. I think they may have overdone it a little bit hop wise. It's probably oils, hop oils that they've chucked in, they won't really have chucked. Um, hop pellets or hop hops themselves in but that's okay it's all right it's not as rounded and um, and sophisticated let's see if I can zoom in properly on that standard everyday hops that you would chuck into an APA it's okay I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna raise it above what it is. I mean, it's, it's a decent um, 5.5. It's okay. It's a nice, nicely clear, 
it's lost most of its head now. Let's just do a But on the nose, it is, it's malty, it's not as hoppy on the nose. Um, it's nice, it's got a completely inoffensive presentation. But, would I buy it again? Maybe. Not sure. But it's, there's nothing wrong with it. But it's not outstanding. If I got this in a, um, you can see the reflection of my t-shirt in there. Look. <laughs> if I got this in a, in a part of a tasting pack from something like Flavorly, I wouldn't be disappointed. Right. Back when it's time for the next one. I don't know why my camera's gone weird tonight. Look at that, that's better. Some things are in focus. Some things aren't. Let's see if we can get our little boat that we planted up earlier. A concrete boat. And by the way, a little bit of trivia for you. In the Second World War, they did actually build boats out of concrete. And they floated and they used them for carrying cargo. Really, honestly. If you don't believe me, go Google it. Right, so two down. Back when we're ready for the third. Day two. And two more beers. I'm very tempted to try the Red Rye Captain Pow because it says it's got orange aroma <laughs> with notes of caramel and toffee. And after the day I've had, that'd be quite welcome. Anyway, I did the label in the last video. Let's stop bollocking about and, uh, and get it in the glass. First thing that strikes you. It's colour. It's beautiful. Almost a work of art. Um, but it is a red rye. So let's have a taster. Hmm. It's there, it's very much like um, a standard sort of west coasty red. A summit, cascade, something that I can't pronounce. Hang on, sorry, I should be showing you that. Shaw melon, etc. Amarillo. Uh, it's okay, uh, it's not. It doesn't leap out. It's quite malty on the nose. Very disappointing head. I'm, st I'm not going to do it. I'm still not going to do it. It has that kind of sharp aftertaste, that bitter, sort of fairly sharp, but it's a bit bittery aftertaste. very dry but beautifully clear you can see all the shadow in here of you can see the stage that's the stage over there you can see the stage lights and everything Ooh, look at that in the reflectations right do you know i mean it's all right let's just check how much it was <laughs> you know what that was 99p. <laughs> 99 pence. It's 4.2 and um, standard 330 micro mile thingy. Yeah. yeah. Third of a litre, basically. That's all right. 99p. I'm not sure what to say apart from, yeah, why not? Soon we'll be back with the Session IPA. The second of, I think these are both the 99p. Um, it says hoppy. Oh, the wind's really getting up. 
going to have a really windy night tonight, I can tell. Um, yeah, it says it's hoppy and zesty and whatever, and it's packed full of uh, of hops. We've got Admiral, Nelson Sovin, which is a nice New Zealand, Citra, Halatal Blanc, um, Summit, Chinook, Columbus, Cascade, and Centennial. So, I mean, apart from kind of like Citra and Nelson Sovin, which are fairly expensive, they're, they're reasonably accessibly priced hops. And the hop aroma really, really grabs you immediately. All I've done is opened it, poured it, and took a photo of it for untapped. It's got a tiny head, a little head. <laughs> I know you're waiting for it. It's not happening. Uh, right, let's see what it's like on the old Tasty Bud. That is a very, very passable everyday drinking IPA. I'm not displeased with that at all. It's not outstanding, but neither is it boring. Aftertaste, hoppy, quite dry. Nice colour, beautiful plumage, uh, aroma. Delilah likes it. That's not bad. For 99 pence, do you know? I'm trying to get a. It's not as crystal clear as the rye red, but that's okay. Little 99p. There you go. That, excuse the uh, caustic soda, do it this way. And the empty corny keg. And the sun lounger. <laughs> that, for 99p, it's a bit of a bargain. Number five, third for tonight, and this is the rather nicely packaged German Pale Ale Steam Brew. And the thing to say first about this is that this is half a litre. Now most cans of this ilk will be 440 millilitres. This is a full half litre, 500 mil. So this is the same as a large bottle of beer. Now I think that's okay. 4.9%. Let's see what we think. First thing that strikes me is it has got quality head. What can you say? It kind of looks as though it's unfiltered. I have to say, I haven't read all the blurb on the back because it doesn't really, it's in different, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. However, half a litre, unfiltered, good head, good start. What we need to do now is have a bit of a taste. Nice mouthful of hop. Very, very good hop aroma. 
very clean, quite dry on the aftertaste actually. <coughs> oh, works. It's keeping its head. Not remarkable, but by far the best we've had. So, it's got a nice hoppy, fairly fresh aroma. That's good, that's all right. It's half a litre, not sure how much it was. I'll stick it up on screen, if I remember. Um, but that, that's, that's passable, well passable. But you know, obviously it's German and the Germans know how to make beer. It's not just all kind of like lagers and stuff over there, the laws. They've been at it a long time. They're gonna get it right. So yes, that gets a thumbs up from me. Thumbs up for number five. Five down. I have two more now. Now this would normally, if we're weighing this against the flavourly order, would be the end. Because there's only seven beers with that. Even though there's 20 cans, there's just the seven beers. So, there'll be three more to follow this. Oh, bonus three. The other thing, um, these are half a litre and 5%. Half a litre compared to 330 millilitres, which is a third of a litre, for those who don't really do new money. So a third of a litre versus half a litre. Right, let's see which one I'm gonna do first. It has a beautiful colour and a beautiful clarity. You know, I think whatever this brewery is, it's a it's a contract brewery. It's one of these um, white label breweries that brew for little, and I think they've probably got a centrifuge in there that they use to clear these beers because these are stunningly clear. Right, so. Here we go with a Green Gecko IPA. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Now, it's all right. I I was expecting it's a bit sweeter than I was expecting. Right. It's not got an unpleasant mouthfeel. What's it got on the nose? Hang on. It's not massively hoppy on the nose, but you do get the you do get a nice gentle kind of like hoppy mm, yeah that's all right let's have another slug see what we think mm. it's got quite a powerful bitterness in there which I would guess is from a, a fairly early and quite large hop addition in the boil. That's all right, but again, where's the head? Why aren't any of these beers giving me a good head? A good head, I said, I'm not gonna do, I know what you're thinking. You're waiting, it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna do it. Um, but none of these beers, either from Flavorly or this lot from Lidl have anywhere near an impressive head. 
Right, I'm not going to slug all this back at once. I'm going to wait a little while and then we're going to do this little beauty. Mm. We shall see. But for now, yep, not displeased with that. I'll put the price up on screen here somewhere uh, so you know how much it was because I haven't got the um, receipt to hand. But yes, that's good. Happy with that. Just as a, as a very quick follow-up, having now drunk most of this, it's not a tropical thunderstorm. It doesn't really have those big American flavours. It hasn't got a distinctive lemon and grapefruit finish. Um, so it's not really that such an unblinking uh, classy brew as they're trying to make out. It has got a lovely malty taste, it has got the hops, but it's not as it is made out to be on here. Having said that, it is still a lovely brew, but kind of sold in the wrong way. I've changed my mind. I was going to go for that, but instead I thought I'd go for this. The reason for that is this here, according to the words on the back, it's starting, it's added a bit of chocolate more, it's starting to get a bit darker. So I have this and a couple, I've got a porter and um, the Brains dark beer. So I'm going to move to the dark side after this, but first I'm going to do this one. Now, this is kind of like the equivalent of the, um, I suppose, Clockwork Tangerine, in a sense, a little bit. This, just as a reminder, was the one that we came, uh, that, we, that came in with the um, Flavourly order. It was all right. For pure, it's all right. It's good enough. So, this is the trend now for orange-flavoured IPAs. Give you a quick... A quick gander on the back because it does I, what I do like about this is it tells you it's got pal malt it's got Rakao which is probably at the moment along with Citra my favorite hop and, and I know it sounds a bit I don't know you know uh, along with Admiral it's got first gold Mandarina and Bavaria, why isn't that fucking focusing? There you go. So it's not quite as bitter on the International Bitterness Unit of 35. Reckons it goes well with hoisin duck pancakes. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice, boys and girls. Right, so first observation is having poured that. Ooh, a few minutes ago look it is giving me really good head it has not retained its head so it's short lasting but you know any head is better than no head and I'm still not gonna do that comment I'm not gonna do it what I'm gonna do is I can taste it All right here we go that's the thing while I taste it oh on the nose by the way Beautiful, powerful, very, very powerful. Beautiful, citrusy, just like tangerine -y, wonderful. Love it. Orangey. Whoa. Right. <sighs> Lovely and clear. Again, I reckon it's been for a centrifuge. You don't get clear beer like that, normatively. What does it taste like? The afterburn, well, it's not really a burn. It's quite smooth, quite nice, actually. But, I have to say, I don't know, it's got a bit of a chemical. It's all right definitely got that citrusy orangey on the burp 
head's still trying to hang on a bit. The aroma is beautiful. But the taste. It's nice. A little bit chemically, and you know what? Sadly, I'm not getting the Rakal coming out of here. I'm not getting that kind of piney sort of. I don't know, or am I? Not sure. Not sure about this. What would be good? I might get another one of these. In fact, what I might do, I might do a video on all of these orangey, great uh, orangey, tangerine, -y, clockwork tangerine -y type ones, because that's the one from Flavorly. I might do a separate video on these. Now I'm going to try this. This is where we start moving towards the dark side. Oh, the dark side. Luke, I am your bartender. Oh, right. Got to just say two things immediately spring to mind. Three things, actually. The first thing is I wish I hadn't left that bucket full of hoses down there. Because they all need cleaning. And so does this empty keg. Sorry about that. Second thing is, look at that colour. Oh, fuck me, that is bloody gorgeous. I don't know. Oh, God. And the third thing. That is by far the best head I've had out of this order flavorly. I I can't describe. It's kind of creamy. It's smooth. It's not lasting. But it's there. And if I can get the focus right, look. Ickle bubbles. Now that, that's not bad. Try and, oh, fuck off. Oh, look. All you're doing is getting a reflection of my really <laughs> crowded workshop. Crowd, not crowded, you know what I mean, cluttered. Right, enough of that bollocks. Let's have a sniff and a taste. There's not an awful lot on the nose, if I'm honest. I'm getting a sort of... a fruity, malty... but I'm not an expert. But it's... it's all right. Let's go for a taste. Wow. Actually, you know... That is fruity. Oh God, that is, that is well fruity. I um, I haven't really, should have done this, shouldn't I? I should have looked on the back. See what it says, 100% British barley, blah, blah, blah. Blend of power, crystal, chocolate. Sort of get the chocolate out of that, but it's more fruity than it is chocolatey. Delicious toffee malt. Not really getting toffee either. That's weird, isn't that weird? I'm getting a nice kind of a wintry, almost wintry, fruity. Hang on, let's have another go.
That's a lovely, lovely brew. But I'm not getting what they're claiming. I don't know what, perhaps my taste buds are fucked. Who knows? I mean, it's quite possible after so many years of <laughs> abusing them. It's possible, but it's a lovely color. It's not got a massive nose on it. It's certainly not as malty as they claim. How strange. But I like it. I do like it. Uh, I saved a little bit in the bottle. I'll chuck that in now. Let's see what happens to the head. Again, look, cream straight up. So, yes. Um, have a wood. <laughs> Got to choose a name, I suppose. That's what I did with Hagen Dars. I think I mentioned that before. No, that is that is nice. Oh, let's go off against that light. It's a beautiful, beautiful colour. Yes. Oh, look, you can even see me in there a little bit. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not displeased with that. I would definitely drink that again. And again, it's um, 500 mil, half a litre, and uh, a decent 5%. I'm, I'm all right with that. In fact, I'm more than all right with that. It's not what they claim it to be, but it's bloody lovely. Right, um, yeah, I'd recommend that. If you try any of these, and you disagree with me please feel free to, i mean don't call me a twat or whatever but feel free to leave a note in the um in the comments below um because i'm no expert right i'm doing this really the whole point of these silly videos i'm putting up are to ease the lockdown boredom even though we're told today the lockdown is going to be eased it is still a lockdown boredom so if you try this and you disagree or you find something different Please put a, in the down there in the comments. I'm pointing at my groin, but in the comments underneath this, please tell me what you think, because uh, you know everything's valid, isn't it? But for me, that Ruby Rooster, yeah, have a wood. That's good for me. Day three, and the last two purchases from Lidl. I don't know where I left this yesterday, but uh, I'm fairly sure I've done eight of the ten. I'm going to look a, a bit of a prat if I haven't. Anyway, today we move on to the two dark um, offerings. The last of the Hatherwood, and this is the Purple Panther. Ooh, a porter at 5%, okay, but it is half a litre. Now, I'm a bit of a fan of, um, of porters, as some people know, and my favourite colour is purple. And what uh, some people won't realise is that I have currently um, dyed my hair purple. <laughs> because, no, I'm not going to show you. But um, plenty of grey coming through, and um, and someone said, "Well, why don't you dye it?" So I did. Purple. Right. Let's get this poured. Well, today we're using a magic rock glass. Now, what's the first thing that we notice is? It's got a little head. Look at that. Not quite as thick and creamy as I was expecting, but a nice little head nonetheless. Right, and it smells definitely, you definitely get in the porter from it. Let's have a whiff and a slurp.
well that's definitely got the depth of flavour it's got some toffee it's got some chocolate it's not got the full bodiness of a, a, like a yeah, really heavyweight stout but that ain't bad If you like a dark beer, and I do like porters, I like stouts as well, this hasn't kept its head. This is a very, very reasonable porter. I'm just going to see how much it was. <laughs> I don't believe this. This is um, £1.9p. Oh God, that is definitely worth a pound and nine P. <laughs> really, what you're talking about is a pound a pint. And that's, that's worth a pound. It's not at all offensive. And okay, it's a it's a white label brewery brewing for Lidl. They've got you know the the range has each got a number. So the um, the red we had yesterday was four or something like whatever it was. Anyway, I don't care. I'm 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 sold. I think that's all right for for a quid. That is a blinding bargain. Okay, I'm going to finish this off and then the last we're going to do is the little Welsh offering, Brains Dark. And Brains, it's a lovely little brewery in, uh, in Cardiff, uh, down in Tiger Bay there. We haven't been there for many a year, but I do like Cardiff. Uh, Butte Park in the middle of Cardiff, I've got some photos somewhere. Uh, where we went with Marley's predecessor, Max. We went down, we stayed in the Cardiff Bay, stayed in a nice posh hotel. And um, so we'll come back and we'll do that in a minute. Uh, and uh, that will be our 10 from Lidl. Got to admit, at £1.9, that purple panther thingy, bargain. Anyway, I thought I'd start this with, um, with all the blurb on here. So it's a it's an old old recipe, but it's claiming chocolate and coffee and licorice and all those sort of things. Intense flavour. I haven't tried this before. I've tried Brains Bitter. And that was that's you know, it was Brains Bitter was um in Cardiff pretty much what Wards was in Sheffield. People don't know what Wards was, hard luck. Um it was the sort of thing you'd go out all night completely lashed on it and uh, and probably still be sober enough to drive home no sorry I didn't really say that right so this is brains dark and I've got to say that's the most beautiful head I've had from any of these I mean it even looks never mind I'm not gonna do it I'm just so not gonna do it so what's it taste like and smell like Oh yes. Right. They claim licorice. Yes. First thing that hits you on the nose, licorice. Beautiful. It's got a superb bitterness to it as well. And it's got a it's got a nice sort of mellow aftertaste. 
definitely licorice, definitely getting licorice. Not as much of the coffee and chocolate, but that is a full on, I don't know if we can get any light, sort of a little bit, I don't know, can you see that little bit of light through there? That is rich, that is well rich, that, and it's sort of trying to, trying to keep, trying to keep the head going there, isn't it? It's not doing right well with that. But it's so far, that's the best head that I've had from this series. <laughs> I nearly did it, didn't I? Oh, fuck it, I do like some head. Just, just everyone, bear that in mind. <laughs> I couldn't, could I? Delilah, darling, could I have got through this whole um, tasting exercise without mentioning how much I like a bit of head? This is 149 and that again that is a bargain it's rich kind of a little bit dry and sharp on the aftertaste if you like a bit of licorice I'm not I'm a bit ambivalent when it comes to licorice but in this it's got that I'm not talking about the you know the Bertie Bassett I'm talking about proper like proper licorice yes people this is number 10 out of 10 from the Lidl batch that I bought so let's have a little retrospective and see how does it weigh up against the flavorly box I have retired to the office to give my uh, my opinion and I do apologize there's going to be this irritating ticking in the background because uh, I'm doing a yeast starter for the net or two yeast starters actually for the next couple of brews I'm doing which is a New England IPA and a, a heavily hopped West Coast IPA with Citra and Idaho 7 I think I can't remember anyway right what do we think about this Lidl 10 versus the Flavorly box? Well, do you know, the Lidl lot for less than 12 quid, you can't fault it at all. It's impossible to fault those beers for that price. Flavorly, 30 quid for 20 beers, 330 milliliter beers. What is in Flavorly's favour in this is that it's a you know it's a gift box, isn't it? Really? You get the magazine, the little snack, the couple of glasses and whatever. But the selection of beers was poor. I hate having to say that. It wasn't a good selection of beers but for a one-off to buy for 30 quid yeah it's okay but it's not a it's nowhere near nowhere near the value of those 10 beers from Lidl and that surprised me. And I don't want to sound snobbish or whatever, but I mean, I've, I've shopped at Lidl and Aldi for um, years. In fact, well, we were shopping at Aldi before it was popular, um, mainly because I've got lots of German friends and, and that's just what you do in Germany. <laughs> you go to Aldi. The quality of the beers from Lidl was outstanding value it just outstanding value i i can't fault them on the value neither flavorly or Lidl had those really exciting adventurous wow beers they didn't yeah. but for general everyday drinking there's no way i can fault Lidl. and really 
for a present or whatever, probably can't fault Flavorly either. But the selection from Flavorly, no way. No way could that compete with what I picked up from Lidl for under 12 quid. So that's my verdict. And um, I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has been better than watching daytime television during the lockdown. If you have found this helpful, or funny, or informative, or if I've just taken you away from having to watch Homes Under the Hammer or Bargain Hunt, then uh, provided you've enjoyed it, I'm happy. Uh, I've enjoyed doing this. I'm going to do um, Aldi next. I'm going to buy some, I'm going to get 10 beers from Aldi. And then I'm going to actually try and start comparing some of the orange IPAs and, and whatever. Uh, so there'll probably be a few more videos. If you would like to see them, if you think this nonsense is worthy of your time, uh, please uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel. If you click the little bell icon and then select all videos, it will send you a little notification every time I stick something stupid up. Uh, and if you click the little thumbs up like thing, it tells YouTube's algorithm that uh, it might be worth uh, inviting other people to watch my rubbish. <laughs> and that, at the end of the day, yeah, I'm not a filmmaker. I'm sorry, I'm not a filmmaker. I do this just try to help to uh, entertain and inform. Um, and if, if I've been successful in that, then brilliant. Um, stay safe. Stay well and enjoy your beers drink responsibly and happily until next time bye bye boys and girls